Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, people around the world, you want to see some boomers? You want to see some Xers? Watch some old movies? Are they good? Are they bad? Do they hold up? This is the place for you. Like us, share us, subscribe, click the buttons down below. Let's get into the hunt for Red October. Let's see. 1990 thriller action running two hours and 15 minutes. 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb, 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, 82% on Just Watch, whatever that is, 80, 87% of uh, Google users like this movie, and based on the popular Tom Clancy novel, this suspenseful movie tracks down Soviet submarine captain Marco Ramius, Sean Connery, as he abandons his orders and heads for the east coast of the United States. Equipped with innovative stealth technology, Ramius' submarine, submarine Red October is virtually invisible. However, when an American sub briefly detects the Russian's presence, CIA agent Jack Ryan, played by Alec Baldwin, sets out to determine Ramius' motives, feature. Fearing he may launch an attack on the U.S. That was a lot of words for a description for this. Holy moly. March 2nd, 1990. Directed by John McTiernan. Story by Tom yeah. Kennedy. Screenplay. Larry Ferguson. Donald E. Stewart and David Shaber. Distributed by Paramount Pictures. McTiernan starring Sean Connery, man. Alec Baldwin, Sam Neill, Larry Ferguson, Scott Glenn. Darth Vader himself, James Earl Jones, Tim Curry, Peter Firth, and a gigantic cast of people that I'm sure that Liz and Josh are going to remind us of when we get into this interview. Let's do it. Josh, this is your movie. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was refreshing to be able to take an opportunity to sit down and watch it again. It reminded me of. Uh, uh, how simple the world was in the midst of the Cold War. <laughs> you know, before the advent of uh, the internet and social media and, uh, and our, our ongoing knowledge of our own government's terrible corruption. Back then, there were good guys and bad guys. It was us and the Soviets. Uh, it was a simple time, and it was a good time. Um, I, this movie... You know, you would think a movie about submarine combat would be kind of boring, but somehow they managed to pull it off to make it, like, intense and compelling. You know, even the scenes where the submarines are basically, like, you know, doing circles around each other, trying to get in behind each other so that they can fire their torpedoes. The the movie just, it, it doesn't miss a beat. There's no slow parts. Everything is, like, quality exposition or interplay between the characters. The action's good. Um, <laughs> there was even one part that made me laugh out loud that probably wasn't appropriate, but the the scene where Alec Baldwin is on the Red October and he finds the saboteur, which is the Russian cook, and then he has that standoff where the cook's got the wires to uh, set off one of the nukes inside the, the sub, and Baldwin's got his gun pointed at him. I'm like, is that how it went down with that, uh, that movie you just did? <laughs> Where he blasted the uh, the fill the, 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 the making. I'm like, I, I feel like he had some experience with this, just this cold blooded stare. Anyway, um, and you know, I was I think I mentioned to you guys before the show, but it's like surprising how many people are in this film. Like you know, in your list, you missed uh, Stellan Skarsgård. He's in it. He looks like he's like five. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's not forget the uh, the classic Sven Oli Thorson as the uh, the bosun on board the uh, Red October with his big beard singing the uh, Soviet national anthem. Um, man. Uh, oh, and the uh, score of the movie, uh, not coincidentally, is done by Basil Polidorus, who also did the score for the Conan movies. So you got a little twofer with uh, Sven and uh, Basil there. So... Great stuff. So good. It is good. So good. Well, and then you, for the person that I think you didn't mention. Oh, yes. Your thing. Sorry. Dr. Crusher from Star Trek The Next Generation's in this. Plays his wife. She's in all of like three seconds of this movie. But damn, 
She did a good job. <laughs> yeah. Super excited when I forgot that she was in there. Is that Gates McFadden? Yeah, Gates McFadden. Yeah. Dr. Crusher. Yeah, I think that Sean Connery could have done a little bit better job hiding his Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> and you laugh because it's true. It's funny because it it's true. But and but, I, I but also they think were, that they, 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 they considering down. considering that the submarine warfare was like uh it was like a game of battleship on a on a bridge. <laughs> like uh it, it was entertaining. Yeah, you know, they were able to pull it off, but it, it, I watched a review of, like, you ever watch real people reviewing things that happen in movies? And mm -hmm. there's submarine guys that you couldn't be on a submarine whilst there was any type of other submarines around you and take steps on the submarine. You couldn't sneeze. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't talk. You couldn't whisper because those things reverberate sound everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't be on there shooting guns and shit or yelling at each other or strangling, strangling KGB. Like there's so many there's or so singing, much singing the national anthem. Yeah. Like, you, like you can't, the people who were on there, they got their fucking, you can't even fart. Like, you got your sphincter t so tight, and you're just there because <laughs> any noise you make, that shit's going to give you away. And considering how big of an asset the Red October was and how it was supposed to be this awesome thing, dude, it only took my man like five minutes in the beginning of the movie to be like, oh, I found the sound. Like, <laughs> it was like... And they were, and they were, and they, and and it seemed like they just like, yeah, we know where it is, and they just kept that shit to themselves. They, the rest of the navy didn't know that they knew. They just like, ah, oh, we're just down here. We're gonna go fucking. We're gonna hit them. They're gonna take the left turn at Albuquerque. We're gonna hit them over here at this island and see what happens. And they're just like, it's almost, it, it almost felt like, uh, like Wild West in the sense that, you know, they're just out west and happen to be union troops that stumble across some bad stuff and they just deal with it on the fly. They're not waiting for their orders from Washington or anything like that. So it, uh, if I allow myself to suspend my disbelief, I could be entertained. And I was by this one. I think, I think that the funny part about Sean Connery's accent is that you thought that Sean Connery could be told to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Connery ain't changing nothing for nobody. The assistant no, director didn't. tried to tell me not to talk like I was Irish, and I smiled. No, he, he he <laughs> had the Russian he had the Russian accent until one of my favorite cuts of the movie, and it's literally the brilliancy of it. So, like in the beginning of the movie, he does have a Russian accent. He's, well, he's got speaking it, Russian, speaking right? Russian. When he's speaking Russian, but the way Tiernan does the whole, you know, while zoom in on the lips. And then he pulls back out, and they're and they're speaking English and shit. Like that was just a fucking. It, it again, McTiernan's fucking brilliant. You know what I mean? He could take something simple and do it that way. Yep. And I think it's one. I I, I love Sean Connery in this movie. That he's the only reason why I sit through the movie is because of that. I think Alec Baldwin is the worst Jack Ryan that we've ever had. He bugged the hell out of me, even though he's a hairy chested fucker just like me. You know what I mean? Like I was like, yeah, dude, like I, I could relate with that sexiness right there. But I just I don't like his Jack Ryan. Like I don't really dig it. So because of that, I'm sorry to tell you guys, I had to put on my jaded sunglasses, dude. Because today, I think I found the movie that I thought was up here, and it just went down to here to me. Uh -huh. and, and and and. I think I think again I had it bigger in my head because I remember loving this movie. Like I remember loving the flick, dude. Like I and I was watching it and I was kind of disappointed. I was like, I, I swear there was more to this movie, or like it had more like you know, like the, the 
there are like you like you said this the idea that they're just going around in the circle you know it you felt know more I mean? like a 70s movie than a 90s movie to be honest yeah exactly like a lot like in but mctiernan is is a great director you know what i mean like he he puts you in the seat of it and makes you feel i mean like think about it this way we watch top gun right we love top gun so much you know what i mean Jets don't fly that low when they're doing dog fights. You know what I mean? There's no, you don't see the ground. You don't see mountains. They're way the fuck in the sky, but you can't film that because it doesn't look like they're going fast. So to make it look like they're going fast, we have to shoot them down, you know, flying low and we buy it. You know what I mean? The same thing with this. We're, we're buying that the fact that these things are, you know, underwater and they're shooting at each other, but like, okay, like, okay, the, the, the chicken with the torpedo, right? Like that was so dragged out to me and I bet you in the, at the time it came out, I bet you it was intense, but I'm like watching it going like, he's like three, 30 seconds till impact, keep the rudder running, 20 seconds to impact. Like that was the whole, I was like, dude, seriously, at least show the torpedo like coming at him or something. It was just them standing there talking and I was like, oh fuck dude, come on man, dude. So I, I, I don't think the movie was bad. You know what I mean? Like it's not bad. It's just not what I remembered it. Like that. It's just that's that left a bad taste in my mouth. Cause I remember loving it, like when I was younger. And so I'm like, eh. So my score is gonna show up because of that. I apologize up front, dude. But this is yeah. One of, that this is one of the few times that the movie is actually better than the book, and it made mm -hmm. the 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 yeah. Cause the book is very dry and he describes every rivet every i hate rivet. tom clancy i hate him i, <laughs> I hate his book so bad there him been, and robert lundum fuck there them. have been they, two books in my life that i've started to read and stopped i'm like if i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it hunt for Red october and interview with the vampire those are i like interview I read Stardust is on that list by Neil Gaiman. The book is absolutely atrocious, but I finished it because it was a little bit shorter. But like, but the movies were better than the books. <laughs> this is one of them. And I love this movie a lot. And, uh, but yeah, this is one of the few times that the movie is better than the book. Because the, the book is rough. Like, it's Who's just, your guys' favorite Jack Ryan? Because we've had we've had all Harrison types of Ford. people playing. That's okay. So we've had Alec Baldwin, Harrison Ford, Chris Pine, J, uh, John Krasinski's the newest one, and Ben Affleck. Harrison Ford. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. It's probably weird, but I'm I'm partial to uh, Krasinski. He's good, but I don't really like Harrison. I just, Ford. I just don't like. <laughs> I don't like that they're taking a lot of liberties in the stories that he's in. But I think yeah. he's he's probably closer because, if memory serves, Jack Ryan in the novels is an analyst. You know, some some of the other ones like Harrison Ford. You know, he always comes across as a rough and tumble action kind of guy. He doesn't really come across as an analyst. I mean. You know, let, let's be honest, even even when he plays Indiana Jones, the idea that he's a professor, you're like, he's just in it for the tale. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and like Chris Pine, he doesn't I've come I've never seen Chris Pine or Ben Affleck. I know they and, did it, and, but and I don't yeah, those and ones. Affleck, I forgot. These guys don't come across as people that sit behind a desk, but Krasinski, especially with his past in the office, you already have it set in your mind that he's a pencil pusher. You know right. what I mean? Now, now Jack Ryan has more to him than that. He's got a background of being in the you know active service and everything. But um, Krasinski sells the the desk jockey. So I I agree. I it's tied for me between Harrison Ford and Krasinski. And the only reason why I like him Harrison Ford as, as Ryan is because some of my favorite Jack Ryan scenes are the two Patriot games and clear and present danger. Yeah. Like, you know, like those are like intense scenes, like, you know, and Krasinski, I agree. He, he's able to balance the two, you know what I mean? Where you look at him and you can say he is a pencil pusher, but he does look like he could fuck you up if he had to, you know what I mean? Like right. he's seen some shit. So I agree with that. But like Chris Pine was kind of a, I've watched all the Jack Ryan's. I love them. I've watched every single one of them because my dad, 
is a Jack Ryan junkie. If, if, if it says Jack Ryan on it, he wants to see everything. He wants to buy all the merchandise and shit like that. So I'm always taking him to go see him. And I'm always like, oh, okay, you know, these are these are pretty cool flicks, you know, and stuff. But like the the Aflac one, I remember I was watching it the, like before we watched The Hunt for Red October, it just happened to be on TV and I was watching it and I'm like, this is probably the one movie I forgot that he sucks in. Like, this is bad. <laughs> this is like horrible. Like, Jesus Christ. So he's the worst well, in my opinion. Even though, even though I think that Krasinski is probably the best Jack Ryan that we've gotten. I still think that the hunt for October is the better is the better film. I think that the first time out is the best time out. Um, I this one uh, this one hits all of the markers for me. That you know, especially with the Soviets as the bad guys, that's you, know, you don't get them much better than that. You really don't. I still shed a tear when Sam Neill's character dies. Like he's just like, I would have liked to see Montana. I'm just like, oh. Like, oh. <laughs> oh no, the death the death scene that Sean Connery gives the one guy the fucking guy I uh, one that one brings him the, the, oh, the, yeah, the political talk, officer. Yeah. And he fucking just bah! I was like, Oh god damn Well yeah, we were I was actually, I was actually talking about that like when when the political officer gets up to leave, like Connery like lunges at him and like roars like a bear. Like, roar! <laughs> was like, Damn. It was it was startling, dude. Like I was like, yeah. God damn. Yeah, beat his man. ass like his wife <laughs> talking ass. crap at dinner time. That's right. <laughs> right. And did you, I'm sure you guys noticed that the um the Russian ambassador is the uh, bad guy from Lethal Weapon Two. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and also like, Genomalist from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Correct. Yeah. And so I like I like I like I like the way though he 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 tells them, Oh, we're looking for a missing sub. Yeah. You know, like we're we're trying to do this and then later on, okay, well technically really this is what we're doing, you know. <laughs> he's the good thing he's playing it off. He's just playing it off. Like we know we you know, we, we how did we not know this, dude? Like what's going on? And the Secretary of Defense is the uh the uncle from uh, Secret, of my success. Secret of My Success. Yep. And and, and, and I love that he's he's sitting there across the table and he's like he's like Andre, you've lost another submarine. No, my favorite <laughs> it sums up it sums up the political whatever. It's like, look, I'm a politician. If I'm not kissing babies, I'm still in their lollipops. And he's just <laughs> that's like he's just not about it. And you're just like that that's the other thing, this movie, even though it's like a supposed to be like an action espionage kind of movie about submarines it still has a lot of like good like quotable like yeah. moments in it too that, you know that was a great line like that was honestly like a fucking like when he said it i busted just, up laughing i was like oh it's great fact, like, <laughs> yeah this is who i am and this is how it is and it, literally, it reminded me of it reminded me of the scene from boogie nights when the guy's talking to Burt reynolds about switching to vhs he's like look man i'm a simple man i like uh, i like uh, pornos and lollipops up my ass okay like he just says it's so fucking monotone you're like what, what? did you just say he likes lollipops in his ass dude like, it's like so when he said that i fucking was dying i was like oh brilliant dude brilliant all right well let's get into it we got hunt for red october it's it's basically a franchise movie, right? And it's yep. the first one, so you know that's gonna that's gonna max show out on cultural relevance. Sure. You know, uh, if you want to give, if if I were to give Sean Connery, if I were to take a point away for the accent, I would have to give a point back for how good they did his hairpiece <laughs> because he, he had that full head of hair and that looked great. So that, that's that's up there too. This one, this movie, it, it, it holds it down for me. I was able to spend suspend disbelief. I had a good time with it. I want to give Hunt for Red October the eight buckets. My turn. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm right there. It's it's not a perfect movie. Yeah, you know, it's not like an epic movie. It's a really, really, really good movie. <laughs> and my favorite character in it is Sam Neill because he's he like dies. Well, not no. It's just that he's he's kind of like an innocent in this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he doesn't really have 
you don't know his motive to follow Ramius other than loyalty, you know? So, like, Sam Neill's, I think he did the, his is probably the best, like, acting in this movie. Like, he's just, yeah, he was really good. But I give it an eight. It's, I love watching this movie over and over and over again. And I tend to pick up little things here and there that I've missed in the other previous 30 times that I've seen it. So, I like it. I love this movie. Well, uh, it should be pretty obvious from how glowing that I've been uh, talking about this film that I think it's up there. It's one of my favorites. I've loved it since it came out. Um, it's Obviously, it's not an epic film. It's just under an epic film. And I do have to say that Alec Baldwin does take a little bit away from it, but not enough to make it terrible. So I'm going to give this like a, like a strong eight, like an eight and a half. Nice. All right, Fuzzy. What, all right. Tell us about the fuzzy points. All right, well, so, I'm going to sit back for this one. <laughs> all right. So before we watched it, I had it at a nine. Okay. This was a nine. Oh, good God. It got dark. The devil came and got me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. The Kukui tried to get me. <laughs> that's that's how, how emotional I felt. The lights went out. Just bam, like that. So I had it at a nine. After re-watching it, I brought it down to a five, but, but, because of great lines like stealing lollipops, one point, because the camera zoomed in and looked at his mouth and trans tra easily didn't have to, you know, just became English, another point, I'm giving this movie a seven, ladies and gentlemen, a seven, because it is good, it is a good movie, it just, again, personally is just because of fucking how much I remember loving it and then seeing it and it just didn't hold up to what I remembered it. So that's my personal fault in it, but it is a good movie. Everything they're saying is correct. You know what I mean? Like I can't point out a bad thing about it. I just, I'm sad that it wasn't as good as I remember it. I'm scared to watch Patriot games. Like I wanted to watch after this, I was like, Oh, I'm gonna watch Patriot games and clear and present danger. I'm going to go down the rabbit hole. And after I watched it, I went, I don't want to ruin those. I don't want to ruin those movies for me. I'm going to keep them the same way in my head. You know what I mean? Just leave it that way and call it a day. Whose movie's so. next? It's yours. It's yours, is, I think. Is it me? Yeah. yeah. I got to think about this one. I'm not ready. All right. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I, mean, I want to do something. I want to do something that's going to hit. So I'll announce it later this week. Maybe later tonight. When, when I get the divine inspiration... <laughs> then I'll do it. All right, Fuzzy, take us out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and kick the, click the button on the bottom. And most of all, have some love, some peace, and that Popeye's grease, ladies and gentlemen. We out. Peace. <laughs>